In the track map window we can download a background map as either a satellite image or a street map. which can be set to different quality. The quality of maps does vary depending on the area. And we can fade the image for a clearer view. We can also force a new download to ensure the most up-to-date images are available, though it will run slower. If you can't connect, maybe due to a company firewall, click the Diagnose Connection button. The images are cached in the machine's local drive so they can be used when no internet connection is available. It is important to remember that the images are not totally accurate and can be out by up to 15 meters, so in the Run Manager this can be adjusted if required. Whilst background images look great, they are also useful for three main things. It is possible to examine your racing lines around the track. It can help you learn a track and improve your performance by identifying braking or turn-in points, using them as a reference to push harder if it is possible. It can also help to familiarise or refresh your knowledge of a circuit layout, using points of interest to aid remembering the layout. Useful things such as bridges, tyre walls, rumble strips, buildings, permanent signs etc can all be used to good effect. Let's take a look at an example. If we look at this section of the Silverstone National Circuit, around Maggot's Corner, with a fast left-hand turn leading directly into a tight right-hander with a critical exit line onto the Wellington Strait, it is essential to exit onto the straight as fast as possible to get maximum speed up the straight. I have coloured the track map based on longitudinal acceleration so the braking zones are highlighted in blue. With a series of corners like this, the entry into the first corner is critical, dictating the speed and line taken around the tighter right-hand veins. There will be two critical braking points, one for losing some speed off the straight to navigate the first bend, and the second coming into the tight right-hander where the braking must be much heavier. We must also note that in this second braking section, the lateral g-force will switch from one side to the other, increasing the likelihood of losing traction meaning that the line taken here must be a balance between safe and effective straight line braking and setting up the apex on the tight right hander. Looking at the background image, we can see that the driver can use this gantry as a reference point. Visible from a distance, the car must be in position at the driver's right-hand side of the track as it passes under it. In this example, it is also the point to let off the accelerator, then almost immediately begin to brake and turn in. releasing the brake as much as possible 
and as the driver passes the middle point of the rumble strips, the brakes are applied hard. With the car in the centre of the track and just before the beginning of the inside rumble strip, the driver turns in, aiming to use all the available grip on this tight bend, looking ahead at the far end of the rumble strip, trying to hit the apex here, feeding in the throttle and exiting as fast as possible at the straight. Knowing all these reference points when corners like this are mastered ensures consistency. To master all these points, either by analysing an instructor's or possibly a friend's data in your car, gives a new perspective. And to discover simply by trial and analysis ensures you can set goals, lines and points for action, looking at times, exit speeds, the effects on the next sector, minimum corner speeds and grip use to justify pushing a little harder every time.